Due to capitalism, there is an overwhelming amount of choice when it comes to planning tools. And what's worse is that literally every single platform has five star reviews, like tens of millions of dollars in funding and really slick marketing sites. How are you as the buyer supposed to filter through all of that noise and choose the right tool for your company? I was a sales rep at one of these tools and I used to see buyers struggling with this problem the whole time. So in today's video, I'm going to share four ways that you can use to run a better buying process and choose a better tool for your company. Let's roll. So first of all, I would recommend figuring out which exact problems you're hoping a planning tool is going to help you solve. Sounds pretty basic, but it's super powerful. I took over a thousand calls with customers and in my view, there are good reasons to buy a planning tool and there are bad reasons to buy a planning tool, right? A bad reason would be investors have asked me to buy one, which happens all the time because a company might raise a round of funding or they're preparing for a new round of funding and the investor basically wants them to be really buttoned up and structured on the financial reporting side of things. So it totally makes sense. It doesn't give you very specific criteria against which to evaluate each vendor. And because the finance team is kind of doing it for investors who really have very little skin in the game, they totally underestimate the finance team that is, the amount of time and effort it will take to implement the tool, to learn it, and really don't pay close enough attention to what it's like to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. A great reason to implement the tool is that my team is spending way too much time updating the financial model every month, or it takes way too long for budget holders to submit new requests for new budget. Once you have a document, you have a bunch of your problems in there, you have a bunch of kind of desired outcomes, desired product features, I would recommend sharing that document with your sales rep. Some buyers, I think, are reluctant to do that because they see the relationship between themselves and the sales rep as maybe a little bit antagonistic, but knowledgeable sales reps can use this list to make sure that you're seeing all the right stuff on the demos and also help you to uncover problems and opportunities that you hadn't even thought about. The second thing I'd recommend you to do is figuring out who else in your company has problems that a planning tool could help to solve, speaking with them and getting them involved in the buying process as early as possible. So during my time at Causa, I remember speaking to a VP of finance at one of the software companies and he came into the meeting with a really clear criteria for what he was looking for in a tool. And he had three criteria. First, he wanted a tool that would integrate into his ERP, NetSuite. He wanted a tool that would allow him to run scenarios with a single click really quickly. And the third thing that he wanted is wanted to be able to create dashboards for his sales leaders in the company so they could keep track of their forecasts and how their reps are performing. On the surface, that seems like really great criteria and quite smart because it maximizes the value of the tool and it means it's not just the finance team that's kind of getting benefit from it, right? Makes total sense. But the problem with this approach was that he hadn't actually spoken to any of the sales leaders in his company to see what what they were doing today, what their issues were, or whether they would even be open to using a new tool. So he went to the sales leaders, had these conversations, and he discovered that the sales team was already using a tool called Clary for forecasting, that all the reps loved it, and it integrated directly into Salesforce where all the data actually lived. So then it made way more sense for us to focus our conversation on the reporting and scenario side of things without getting sidetracked into sales forecasting. Less happy examples when the right stakeholders weren't involved in the buying process at the right time, I typically see two things happening, right? One, that the stakeholder would just be brought in towards the very end of the buying process and just expected to rubber stamp a decision that someone in their team or the finance team already took, in which case they wouldn't be bought into using the tool and basically wouldn't use it once it was implemented. Or on the other hand, you'd have people who are brought in towards the end of the sales process who surface a bunch of these totally new requirements we hadn't even thought about that totally derails the buying process and just pushes out the timelines by another month or two. 
Number three, when you're thinking about the cost of one of these tools, don't fixate on the annual license fee and the initial implementation cost. Let's say that you have a quote for $20,000 for the first year and 5K for the initial implementation. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that this tool is gonna to cost you 25K, right? But you're going to have to dedicate a person on your team who will have to spend maybe half of their working week every single week to implementing this tool. And the implementation period might be anywhere between two to three months. Then no business stays static, right? So you're going to invariably have to make changes to your model. That means depending on which kind of planning tool you end up going with and what kind of model that they have, you're either going to have to hire additional headcount, train them up and kind of have them maintaining your tool full time, or you're going to have to outsource bits of work to external agencies, similar to how you know Salesforce does it today. Lots of people underestimate the true cost of one of these tools and so either the costs just start to balloon or they're not able to secure additional budget internally and so they just kind of give up on things and go back to doing things in Excel. I think something like 80% of companies go back into Excel once they've bought one of these tools because of these problems. Number four, spend way more time trying to understand how different systems connect to your data. There's a basic version of this question, which is, do you connect with my ERP, CRM, or data warehouse? But I would go a level deeper. So for example, you should always ask whether data is connected via CSV upload or the direct integration. You should also ask around the level of granularity that you can get for each data source and whether you can analyze data within the tool and how quick it is to create ad hoc reports. There are two reasons reasons why I think asking about data is important. First of all, there's a genuine difference in the way that different tools connect to data. So the differences between the tools overall start to become much clearer and you get to a level of insight and understanding that you wouldn't otherwise. The second reason is that for most tools, bringing in data is normally the first step of the implementation. So if you can set up your data correctly and bring it in, you immediately get value out of a tool which creates this positive momentum around the rest of the implementation. Two of the most popular planning tools in the space are Pigment and Mosaic. Check out my video of Mosaic here and Pigment here as well.